first. All right. Pastor Tay here, founder of the Titus 2 Ministry. And this is Talk Live Tuesday. Hope you guys are tuning in. Hopefully it is working. Okay, let me check. I'm uh, uh, excited to be with you guys tonight. This is part of our weekly shows that we provide for you where we take your questions and your comments about Christian marriage. So uh, let me see, is it working? It uh, looks like it's working. All right, so uh, come on in guys. Give me a thumbs up if you are in and uh, ready to go with your questions and comments. And um, tonight we're gonna be talking about in-laws. But uh, I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes until everybody is settling down. Hi Shannon, good to see you. And uh, just want to remind you that uh, as part of our ongoing series every week, we have a plan. And that plan involves a four topic rotation. And these are the four biggest topics in marriage. Okay, uh, Shannon, can you give me a thumbs up if the audio is okay? Can you hear me? But uh, these are the four topics when it comes to marriage and they are communication. And boy, is that a big one. Experts say that communication is the key to building a marriage. Let's see what she wrote here. She is uh, here from South Louisiana, Cajun country. And uh, are the thumbs up. Thank you for that. Does that mean you can hear me okay? I uh, was well, just going over the four major parts uh, of our Talk Live Tuesday, which involves the four major areas of marriage. They are communication, and experts say that communication is the key to building a relationship. And by the way, all four have many, many subcategories, and that's why we've been doing this for two years now. Uh, the second category is called conflict or conflict resolution, and boy, is that a big one. That involves many subcategories uh, of how you get into conflict and then how to uh, resolve those conflicts. And then number three, which is our topic for today, is in-laws. And uh, I was just thinking today, everybody's an in-law, right? So uh, when we say in-laws, don't just think um, mother-in-law or father-in-law. Think of yourself as, as well. You're a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law or sister-in-law, brother-in-law. I mean, there are just so many uh, uh, relationships here, so many combinations and uh, scenarios as well. So uh, the third one there is in-laws. And then the fourth is sex, and that is a major category as well. And so Talk Like Tuesday is two years old. And I tell you that because I do want you to benefit from all the other shows that we have done in the past. And they are archived in a menu tab called Units. Now, if you're watching this on a mobile device, that menu tab called Units is right above you. So scroll up a little bit, and uh, it is there. And then uh, if you are on a laptop or desktop, uh, it is to your left, okay? So uh, go ahead and take a look at that and uh, you will see that uh, there's a lot of good stuff there. And so this time around, this year, I wanted to just uh, supplement, review, uh, take your questions in real time. So go ahead and post them. I'll stop what I'm saying and uh, I will address the issue. Love to do that. But uh, I'm just telling you that uh, last year, uh, all the presentations were very formal and very structured. And then we took questions at the end. But uh, this year, we're gonna make it much more interactive. And uh, what I wanna do <clears throat> is to just to make sure everything is covered, okay? So I want to uh, systematically go through all of the things there. So you guys ready? Tonight, we're going to talk about in-laws, so come on in. And uh, by the way, if you are watching on a replay, you're welcome to drop comments and questions as well. And what, the, what that does is it takes the old uh, video and it brings it back into the home feed and then everybody else can benefit from that as well. All right, so don't be afraid. If uh, you missed, go ahead and jump in with your questions and comments. All right, so again, there's a, a number of videos on in-laws already in the archives, but I'm just gonna systematically go through and make sure all the, the nooks and crannies, the crevices are covered as well. So 
let's get started okay so I'm gonna start by asking you if you have any fears anxieties <laughs> any phobias do you have any is there anything that makes you uncomfortable okay um, you know I, I looked recently and there are over 530 registered phobias do you have any uh, phobias out there Shannon do you have any I've got some okay so for example uh, well, it's not a full-blown phobia but I don't like like closed in areas okay you know what that's called uh, claustrophobia okay I've got a little bit of claustrophobia so I don't like to be in a tight uh, small area uh, some people got some serious phobias um, uh, what about um, fear of spiders <laughs> or fear of mice or uh, Shannon do you have acrophobia I think that's uh, fear of heights okay I've got a little bit of that I guess I'm tingling in my legs if I'm uh, standing on a hilltop or, or something so that's a very common one but um, what about uh, the number one phobia that is out there do you know what that is it is um, speaking in front of people uh, glossophobia okay that's the number one phobia I thought fear of death or something would be the highest uh, or number one but speaking in front of people wow <laughs> that's number one so uh, uh, I'm talking about phobias because um, there is a phobia that uh, you may not be aware of but it actually has to do with in-laws okay there is a fear of in-laws and again um, don't want to give any impression tonight that all in-laws are bad or anything like that but I'm just acknowledging a very real category it's called so serophobia okay you can google it later it starts with an s o so phobia and it's a fear of in-laws and like any phobia whether it's fear of mice a fear of clowns <laughs> you know there's certain things like nervousness headaches heart rate goes up you might get a little depressed or a little irritated like you're just kind of on edge you know and everybody around you is walking on eggshells if uh, you're thinking about the in-laws and so forth so serophobia is what we're talking about now I did do a video last year on in-law anxieties but I'm just trying to cover all the nooks and crannies tonight to make sure and give you more insight please ask your questions and uh, drop your comments so for example and this is just one example don't overreact or anything I want to say for example the in the daughter-in-law could be fine and uh, by the way uh, just generally speaking a lot of phobias do center around the daughter-in-law okay in fact historically it's been mother-in-law versus daughter-in-law and listen I don't want to bash the mother-in-law tonight I don't want to be critical of the daughter-in-law I'm just saying that historically it has centered or the drama has centered around the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law but so for example if uh, the thought of the mother-in-law visiting whether it's announced and how about if it's unannounced <laughs> she just suddenly stops by wow but if it's announced like she's gonna drop by in a uh, in about an hour you know the daughter-in-law is what vacuuming like crazy or like polishing any furniture that you know she got from the mother-in-law or starts wiping the kitchen or hurry up kids you know hurry up grandma's coming and clean up your room and pick things up or in other words there's kind of a an instant stress uh, in the house and again it's all part of so serophobia okay fear of in-laws and again I want to say I must have said already three times let me I'm gonna keep on saying tonight I'm not here to bash the mother-in-law I'm just stating some generalities uh, that are going on in fact I want to say that speaking of generalities you, you know there's kind of like an underlying tension a discomfort anxieties and so this is kind of a big deal now I've been counseling for over 35 38 years I forget okay but I want to say that of the multiple topics that are out there and you know I said there's four but there's really like ten you know topics in marital counseling I'm gonna say that in-law problems is right up there it could be 
rank number one. You know, I just started a case recently, and they've been married for about 10 years. And uh, in-law problems, number one on the list. Not a surprise. So I'm going to say generally that from my experience and many counselors, that in-law problems is uh, top three. Okay, it could be number one, number two, number three, but it is right up there. And uh, I'm going to say, doesn't matter what culture, what language, what part of the world. And I want to say that because I'm paying respects to how the Titus II marriage builders is all around the world. We have people from all different countries and situations and cultures and languages. And uh, let me tell you something. I have counseled all over the world through video counseling. You know, 99% of what I do is video counseling. I'm telling you, don't matter what language, what culture, there is so seraphobia. There is or there are in-law problems. Now, every culture, you know, cultures vary. And so there might be different levels of intensity. Okay. But the problems are there just uh, across the board. Now, I want to say again, for how many times have I said it, I'm not out here to bash the mother-in-law. In fact, I want to say that there are many, and I have met many mother-in-laws who are very godly, okay? Sometimes the daughter-in-law is evil. <laughs> so listen, I'm not really pointing a finger at anybody. In fact, a big part of our desire uh, with the Talk Live Tuesday tutorials is that you look at yourself okay so you know these videos are really not about bashing anybody it's not about pointing a finger at anybody you know the basic christian principle and that is you got to look at yourself all right don't be too quick to point the finger of criticism at somebody else that's right shannon it's so sarah phobia okay you you almost got it right s-o-c-e-r-a S-O-C-E-R-A, so Sarah, phobia. That's what we're talking about tonight. So listen, drama with in-laws is very complicated because it's not automatically the in-law's fault. Not automatically your fault. In fact, it gets very, very complicated because sometimes there's no such thing as facts. You know, when it comes to drama, it's more like um, uh, the interpretation of the facts. And so there's a lot of interpreting, uh, interpretation that is going on. And so because of that, you know, that expression, two sides of a coin. And so there's all of that to be understood. Um, and so very complicated. But anyway, tonight we're still warming up. It's been almost a year, guys, since we talked about in-laws. So I'm going to systematically go through and cover everything. And uh, if you have any questions about in-law drama, Please drop your comments, but I want to highlight this idea of a phobia or a stress because the thought of your mother-in-law or reverse it, the thought of a daughter-in-law or a son-in-law or, oh my goodness, the father-in-law is, you know, uh, it's very troublesome. And so, you know, it could be anybody in, in the relationship. And so uh, I just want to say, you know what, uh, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of drama. And it can get to the point where there's heart palpitations and uh, nervousness, anxieties, fears, anger. Like you're just so upset at your in-laws. And again, not just mother-in-law, but uh, it could be a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law. And I know in the Titus II Marriage Builders, it's not just young families. What I like about the Marriage Builders community is that uh, we have all different rages, uh, ages. We've got rages, <laughs> all different ages. I was saying we've got young families and we also we have uh, established families as well. All right, so those are some of the preliminary uh, comments. I want to now uh, spend uh, the rest of the time in tonight. Uh, wow, the time is really flying already. Okay, time flies. Um, I only have about 15 minutes left. Uh, sneak in your comments and questions, but I am deliberately going through everything so that your video archive or the Titus to Marriage Builders video archive is just covering everything. So let's uh, start by diagnosing the problem here, okay? And I want to start by looking at yourself, okay? Think about yourself first, okay? Again, don't be so quick. 
to think about your in-laws. But I want to start with you as a married couple, okay? And now you're looking at your in-laws. And they could be mother-in-law, father-in-law, or it could be brother-in-law, sister-in-law. So let's start right there and try to diagnose the couple, the married couple and why there's anxiety, fears, stresses, and uh, things like that. And uh, as we are still warming up, remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? You remember in last week's video, we talked about that as well. Okay, so don't be too quick to point out the sins of others. That's my point. And you know what? I actually feel pretty bad for in-laws because uh, here in America, and uh, you could be other parts of the world where it's like uh, they're walking around with a bullseye on their back because it's just so easy, right? to criticize the in-laws and blame them for everything. It's like they're wearing a permanent kick me sign, right? And it's always their fault, right? It's always a mother-in-law's fault. And uh, have you ever Googled a picture of a mother-in-law? I mean, I, I do all the time because I create PowerPoint multimedia presentations. Go ahead and Google images of mother-in-law and you just see these angry older women and you know, it's just not fair. It's like uh, they're wearing this permanent kick me sign like, it is my fault. Let's blame the mother-in-law and the father-in-law for everything, right? And I'm saying, don't do that, okay? We want to start with a couple. And tonight, with the remainder time, uh, a remainder of the time that we have, I want to point out uh, some of the reasons why the couple might have uh, trouble. In other words, it's within themselves. Remember, I quoted Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. You got to first look at yourself. So what are some of the reasons why the couple might be developing sociophobia, okay, phobia? So when you say phobia, you don't want to automatically blame the, uh, the other. Like uh, if you have a, you know, musophobia, fear of mice, is it the mouse's fault? Is it the mice's fault? Mice's? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. It's not the mouse, okay? It's you. You got to take a hard look at yourself. And so that's what we're doing here. I'm going to go over a few points and we're just going to stop and then pick up when we get to the next cycle. And what I mean by that is communication, conflict, and laws and sex. And then we rotate again and when we come back, we'll pick it up again. So here is one of the reasons why, and I'm diagnosing for you, so serophobia, one of the reasons why the couple might have some sort of um, anxiety or you know, uh, something. And, and I'm going to say it's because, number one, is that the couple can have a negative attitude. The couple can have a negative attitude. Listen, for hundreds of years, can I say thousand or longer, there's been a negative attitude towards in-laws. And so the couple, uh, and my point is, maybe the in-laws haven't done anything wrong, but it starts here inside you where you kind of have a negative image. I've already said if you Google, you're going to see negative uh, images and uh, that reflects kind of a general attitude that uh, society has of it. So Google the mother-in-law images and uh, you get all kinds of uh, different images here. And so what's the problem when you have a negative attitude? If you have a negative attitude, what happens is that you don't give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Did you hear that? That's pretty off, uh, important. If you have a negative attitude towards, towards anybody, okay, you are not giving that person the benefit of the doubt. It's like they're always guilty, all right? And it reminds me of, and I forget the exact verse, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know that chapter on love? I think it's verse 5. And uh, it says, love hopes. And so that's the idea that you're always, you know, extending hope and giving the benefit of the doubt. But if you have a negative attitude, okay, you're not extending hope. You're just automatically going to blame the other person, like roll your eyes and say, oh, it's the mother-in-law or, 
oh, the father-in-law or man, that sister-in-law or whatever. So that negative attitude, you got to check that. Okay. So when we're talking about so serophobia and why a married couple might have it, okay, you have to first start by looking at yourself and saying, you know what, did I, and here's the point, did I inherit a negative attitude from wherever society is just kind of in the air is definitely on Google and everywhere. And, uh, you know, do I have that now where they're automatically guilty about everything? You got to check yourself. By the way, I, I didn't say this last week, but it's the idea that self inventory is the beginning of conflict resolution. I've said it in some of last year's videos on conflict. But let me say it again here. Self inventory is the beginning of conflict resolution. So take a hard look at yourself, Matthew 7, 3, and check your negative attitude and stop blaming your in-laws for everything. Again, they could be guilty, but you know what? Give them the benefit of the doubt and don't make them automatically guilty. You know, I was just thinking about all the TV shows and all the, the movies, all the sitcoms and everything that just bash the mother-in-law and it's just uh, very, very unfortunate. And uh, you know what? We got to be careful here. By the way, I Googled uh, mother-in-law images, I told you, right? And uh, one of the images that popped up was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, I'm not making that up, okay? So I Googled it, I think it was last year, and uh, the T-Rex, the dinosaur with the, the short arms, big mouth and teeth, okay, popped up and that's the, that's the image. And I was just looking for images because I was doing a multimedia presentation for mother-in-law and a T-Rex pops up. You know what also popped up? The Wicked Witch of the West, all right, popped up. You know which movie that is, right? Wizard of Oz, right? And so remember the Wicked Witch of the West and remember poor old Dorothy and uh, remember her whimpering with Toto, you know, the little dog uh, in her arms. And what is she saying to the witch saying, please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me. And so that's the image of uh, the mother-in-law, okay? She's the Wicked Witch of the West and she's a T-Rex. And so listen, you got to check yourself. Because when you say, I've got this fear, I've, my heart is pounding, I can't even stand being next to her. You know, one woman said, uh, you know, when she hugs me, my skin crawls. And I'm just saying, you know what, you can't just blame the other person. I'm not saying they're innocent, but you always have to start with yourself. and Take a hard look at yourself, because there is kind of this negative attitude in the air remember they're wearing the permanent kick me sign on their back that it is automatically their fault remember the very definition of a phobia involves things that are excessive and uh, unreasonable <coughs> excuse me um irrational it's like uh what did the little mouse do to you it's the tiny little mouse but you're freaking out okay your heart is pounding so a phobia has that element of irrationality or excessiveness or it's unreasonable or not giving the benefit of the doubt first corinthians chapter uh, 13 so take a hard look at yourself you might and this point number one is have a negative attitude or i call it the couple might have a negative attitude Questions or comments? Anybody? Jump on in. And even if you're watching this on a replay, go ahead and jump on in and make your comments and uh, questions. I'm looking at the clock and I want to keep these to about 30 minutes or already 23 minutes in. So let me cover another point and please interrupt me anytime. So I'm going over some of the points right now as to why the married couple might have so serophobia or uh, some sort of, um, you know, anxiety or fear or anger, you know. And I'm going to say, take a hard look at yourself. Why do you like that? Why do you have that? And number one was that the couple can have a negative attitude. Here's number two.
Okay, number two, a big number two. Thank you, Shannon, for writing these down and uh, moderating tonight. Number two is the couple can be uncomfortable. The couple can be uncomfortable. Listen, we're not blaming the uh, mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law right now. But I just want to say in general, the married couple can be uncomfortable. You know, all that uh, negative attitude within society certainly does not help. On top of that, the mother-in-law and father-in-law, can I be Captain Obvious for a minute? Okay? They're not your parents. I know that in some cultures, you call them mom and dad, okay? As a, kind of an expression of honor and respect, and I do like that. But I'm going to say the truth, and that is, they're not your mom and dad, okay? They're not biologically your parents. And so they could be the nicest people in the world. And listen, there are some very nice and godly in-laws, but you know, you didn't grow up with them, okay? You didn't grow up, you know, kicking off your shoes and putting your feet on top of the coffee table. You kind of have a general discomfort with in-laws. I guess I'm just saying, you know that expression? It is what it is. So listen, you guys remember visiting in-laws for the first time? Do you remember how uncomfortable you were? You had to be on your best behavior. You sit up straight, right? And you feel like you could never kind of... ah. Lean back and relax like you would do in your own home. That's my point. In your own home, you're just uh, totally relaxed. Uh, you're, you're kind of mentally relaxed, okay? You're not on guard. But if you visit your in-laws, you know, you're kind of on guard, even if they're the nicest people in the world, because not your home, they're not your parents, and so there is that uh, discomfort that is there. So listen, do you see what I'm doing? I'm going over several points here, and I'm trying to talk about you. <laughs> I'm talking about you. I'm on the second point here. The couple can be uncomfortable. I'm talking about you. I'm not automatically blaming the in-laws like, you know, society does. I'm just going to acknowledge what it is. It is what it is, that there's just kind of a discomfort. You feel like they're always watching you okay their eye is always watching you you know you feel like you gotta be on your best behavior and listen some cultures including the uh western culture um i'm out here in uh, california okay including the western culture there's a lot of expectations you know on how you behave you know if you get together at a uh, a gathering you know thanksgiving uh july 4th or whatever holiday you celebrate around the world, there's expectations, you know. What if the daughter-in-law just sat, you know, eating chips and watching TV? Some cultures might look at that and say, hey, you know, uh, what are you doing? You should be in the kitchen helping uh, wash the dishes or set the table or something. You know, look at your behavior. In other words, uh, the parents might, the in-laws might think that, and maybe you feel that pressure as well. Every culture is different. And I mention this because as I do counseling all around the world, cultural expectations do come into play. And if you especially have married interracially or interculturally, there is a difference, interracial, interculture. If you have done that, it gets even more complicated. And again, I'm talking about number two, you're uncomfortable. So you go into a situation and you feel pressure like, you can't sit there and watch TV with chips in your hands. You got to go into the kitchen and help out. And if you don't, you know, you might hear something later. So, you know, I'm just saying you recognize all of that and you feel very uncomfortable. And uh, haven't you seen it in commercials and in movies where the, uh, you know, you go visit the parents, the in-laws and uh, kids just feel very uncomfortable because they're not your Parents, again, I'm not criticizing, I'm just kind of stating what it is. It is what it is, okay? So I see some comments here. It says, why is, uh, why is it like you said, because they didn't grow up with us and they generally more comfortable with their own family? That's just true. I think you're making a good statement there. Uh, Shannon, my son-in-law is from Africa and his culture is very different. Absolutely. We're talking about another world, another continent, you know, and the many European countries and Asian countries and how different are they from the West, North America, South America, Canada, 
and the Australia and in so many places it's just so different and uh, different view of uh, gender roles different view of marriage and uh, language barriers and uh, stuff like that boy we could spend hours I just finished a counseling session that involved cultural differences and misunderstandings miscommunications and can we throw in hurt feelings can we throw in uh, feelings of awkwardness or feeling like you're looking at your mother-in-law saying you know you're kind of rude in some of the things you're saying or the mother-in-law looking at the daughter-in-law and saying why are you so disrespectful there's a, it's just very very different all of those things just make it hard because they're not your parents or now that we're talking about cultural differences uh, you didn't grow up in that culture or you don't speak that language and so all of these things are at play listen I know I'm rapid firing a lot of stuff and maybe it's a lot of stuff to take in, but I'm thinking a lot of this stuff will resonate with you. So you might want to come on back, take a listen again. You might want to sit down with your spouse, listen together and say, hey, honey, you know what? It's not automatically the mother-in-law's fault or daughter-in-law's or excuse me, father-in-law's fault. But we got to kind of look at ourselves. OK, and so as we are diagnosing so serophobia which is the fear of in-laws I'm starting tonight by saying don't automatically blame them in fact take a hard look at yourself and you guys remember what the two points were okay uh, when we're looking at uh, the so serophobia uh, symptoms number one was uh, the couple can have a negative attitude and number two is that the couple can be uncomfortable okay and so you didn't grow up in the home you know they're not your birth parents there could be cultural differences language differences oh there could be even religious differences you know you might have a certain you know I mean of course even within Christianity um, there's so many variations you know you might have uh, you know you might be Presbyterian, your parents are Pentecostal, or your parents are Catholic, uh, you're Protestant. There's so many differences there, worship styles differences, and that's going to become a factor later when we uh, talk about, you know, pressures to attend the same church, stuff like that, okay? All right, thank you, Shannon, for monitoring and uh, talking about all of, writing down all of those things. So those are some of the things, and here we are at 30 minutes okay the, um, the next one I don't have time but I'm just gonna mention it and we'll pick up here next time and that is the couple can feel pressures and obligations you know like spending holidays together go to the same church financial supports so when we're talking about um, so serophobia I'm saying it's not easy to diagnose. In fact, we start by looking at yourself and not automatically blame shifting towards the in-laws. We looked at negative attitudes. We looked at uh, being uncomfortable. And uh, next time we're together, we're going to keep on going to point number three, which is feeling all kinds of pressures and obligations of money spending holidays, lots of different things. And after a while, you don't even realize it. You got full blown soul serophobia. You've got uh, all kinds of anxieties and irritations and anger and just the thought of Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness, okay? You're kind of dreading getting together for Thanksgiving. So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse three, you know, take a hard look at yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, love hopes. And uh, we're going to get into so many more Bible verses. And uh, uh, if you are watching this on a replay, please drop your comments and questions. It was a pleasure to uh, talk to you guys tonight. I always try to keep it about 30 minutes so that it's digestible in one sitting. And so hopefully you benefited from that. Thank you, Shannon, for uh, keeping me on track. Appreciate that, and hopefully you guys have uh, benefited from that. And uh, I also want to say 
that um, yesterday, Monday, we opened the doors for Women of Hope. Woohoo! Okay, Women of Hope, which is a very special private gathering of women, um, believing wives who live with unbelieving husbands. Okay, and uh, it's a very unique group with a very special calling. We opened the doors yesterday so that these ladies can get together and um, have fellowship, accountability and support and inspire one another, comfort one another, share stories. It's called Women of Hope. And I've been uh, posting advertisements um, almost every day to remind you and just want to invite you if you are in that situation or if you know anybody who is in that situation, please look at the advertisements, click the link, and join the ladies on the inside. It's going to be just just incredible as part of their spiritual journey because, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to find a place like that where you can be safe and secure and to find that type of fellowship and accountability. So uh, Women of Hope, go ahead and look for it and uh, click the link and uh, we'll see you on the inside. And speaking of which, I've got a very special announcement. Next week, not Tuesday, okay? We normally meet on Tuesday, but next Wednesday, the good doctor from Denver, okay? We're talking about Don Owsley. He has been one of our resident counselors and teachers, is coming back next Wednesday to talk about unbelieving husbands, uh, believing wives, uh, women of hope. Uh, you know, he did a great workshop. Some of you ladies remember he did that, um, what, about two weeks ago. And uh, he's back by popular demand to answer a very important question about how do you live uh, with an unbelieving husband. It's going to be great. I confirmed with him today. He is excited to uh, do a follow-up tutorial next Wednesday, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. And uh, I'll remind you guys next week, week, but would you make time for that? It's on a Wednesday, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern. But anyway, want to close tonight uh, by uh, just uh, finishing this installment on in-laws and want to say that if any of you guys are having any drama or any challenge with in-laws you know you can contact me for a free conversation okay so just message me privately and we can just chat and talk about strategy i'll diagnose it for you give you a plan of action and uh, hopefully that will encourage you but anyway i want to say good night and good evening uh good night shannon and uh thank you everyone and uh, we'll look forward to the continual blessings that come from uh, Talk Live Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for a devotional drink today. If you love espresso, click here to subscribe so you know when the next one is ready to enjoy. Visit our website for resources for every chapter of your life. And if you're thirsty for more, click here. See you next time. May God bless your day.